guys and welcome to Petrol Ped. So today I am at Hendy Honda in Portsmouth for the latest in my hot hatch series because behind me is a very very cool aggressive looking Honda Civic Type R. Um, I cannot wait to get my hands on this car. As you can see, I'm very on brand today. I'm a massive Honda fan. I was an S2000 owner for four and a half years. I've always wanted to drive one of these. This thing has 306 horsepower through the front wheels, and I am really intrigued to find out what that feels like. So let's have a really good look at this car, inside and out, and then we'll take it up the road and put it through its paces. big difference for this new Civic. So the Type R's of old had the, the, the infamous VTEC, an amazing engine that went across Type R, Integra, S2000, 9000 RPM redline, absolutely bulletproof. But this has gone away from the naturally aspirated, this is forced induction, so it's a direct injection, turbocharged VTEC, um, 306 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, uh, and I'm really, really intrigued to see if, if this car's still got that kind of VTEC character. I know the red line's not the same, but I'm really, really interested to see just how good an engine this is. And also, what happens when you put 306 horsepower through the front wheels of a car? You know, is, is it just going to be a massive handful of understeer and torque steer, or is it going to be manageable? So, really interested to find that out. going to divide opinion. You're either going to absolutely love it or you're absolutely going to hate all of the aero and the wings and everything and think it's too garish. For me, I love it. The second I saw this car, I fell in love with it. I think this is the essence of what a hot hat should look like. It just looks awesome. Massive big quad exhaust, diffuser elements everywhere, huge big carbon wing. It just looks the business. Um, whether I want to live with it on a day-to-day -day basis, that's another story. But you know, from a from a making an impact and looking cool point of view, of all the hot hatches, I think that the Civic Type R is number one. It wins hands down for me on looks. Question is, how good does it drive? Finally behind the wheel of a Honda Civic Type R. I've never driven one, none of the previous versions, always admired them from afar. Um, so <laughs> I've started in the normal driving mode and this car, the second you get in it, you know it's something special. First things first, I have to say the seats are just mega, beautiful kind of Alcantara finish. Um, but it, it's just little things. This gearbox, I've been in this car less than about five minutes, it's stonking. It's a really lovely gear change. But the thing that hits me straight away is when you upshift in this car, you can hear the wastegate from the turbo. And it's you won't, probably won't pick it up on camera, but it just sounds wicked. It's like a, a kind of just a noise when you kind of, let me see if you can, there we go. It's fantastic. So, I'm in the standard mode now. This car is actually quite straightforward in terms of setup. It's got normal driving mode and then it's got a plus R button, which, as you'd imagine, kind of turns it into a bit more of a track focused, sporty car. Um, so, we're going to just kind of have a, a step through. Um, it's a firm ride straight away. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't like firm rides, you're going to probably straight away think this car's a bit firm. but. I quite like that, it is a bit kind of, it, it means business. So, um, 
I, this car feels like a real kind of sporty car. My instant impression, and I'm kind of, I'll, I'll summarise later, my instant impression is, this is the kind of car you drive all day and, and you have lots of fun. Um, it's not nearly as refined and as kind of sit in it for a long time as, as maybe the RS and the A45, but it's just got buckets of character. Buckets of character. The noises it's making, the little like chirps and whooshes. Oh man, that, I do like this gearbox. Get it. Oh yeah, now I've just spotted something very cool. It's got shift up lights. So at the time, I love this dash anyway, you've kind of got your big rev counter in front of you and then the speedo on the main dash itself. But above the speedo, you've got change up lights, LEDs that come across when you're getting near the red line. That is very, very cool. So the big test for me in this car though is how it's going to deal with this horsepower um, and it's got some really clever differentials and all the kind of gubbins you'd expect up front and that's all very well and good but does it work so I'm going to go and press the plus R button. Now the, the centre drama increases here because all my gauges turn red um, I've got a big plus R next to my speedo and also I've got a whole different range of kind of trip computer settings. I've got things that are much more focused around track days, you know, 0 to 60 timers, lap timers, those types of things. Um, but I should now have access to all of that 306 horsepower, 400 Newton meters of torque. Um, and <laughs> it's still going whoosh every time I change gear. Let's go. <laughs> Those are wastegate noises. So, the first thing about this engine, so the, the old VTEX, if you've never driven one, they were amazing units. They'd, they'd rev and you'd get to about sort of four or 5,000 RPM and then this VTEC unit would kick in and you'd get, it was almost like riding a two-stroke motorbike. You'd get this extra boost of power. Um, and what I'm getting in this is very, very similar. So you get to about three, 4,000 RPM, that turbo spools up. Um, whoa, does it launch you at the horizon? Oh, come on. Oh, yes. It's got the same kind of characteristics. with that power. Um, I'm not getting a, a massive sense of torque steer. I haven't put the power down mid corner yet to see what that does for understeer. Let's give it a go here. How do they do that? Oh, oh. You've got to say that suspension's very firm and there's some quite big bumps in this road and just got sort of thrown around all over the place there. How on earth do they do that? How do you get 306 horsepower through a front wheel drive car? That's unbelievable. It's got some um, incredible acceleration. Yes, it's quite a twitchy car. The suspension setup's really firm. I'd imagine on a track it's superb. It does get a bit unsettled on this kind of typical British B road. So that, that it would be nice if there was like a more comfort oriented suspension setting. Um, it feels a bit all or nothing to be honest. Now some of you are going to like that and some of you are going to absolutely detest it. Maybe a bit like the styling actually. Um, but what that suspension does give you is, you know, when you go into a corner, just a massive amount of, of focus and real kind of grip, which is very, very impressive. Whether you could live with that on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not sure. This is a firm car. And this that's coming from someone who drives a John Cooper Works Mini. Yeah, 
out of loving this gearbox. You keep this engine as sitting at that sort of three and a half, four thousand RPM, the, the, the throttle response is really, really super. The brakes are immense. However, the brake pedal and the throttle for me are too far apart. I can't get, I can't get a heel toe going at all. Uh, I'd have to be wearing much wider shoes. And I find that disappointing because for me, if you've got a manual gear change and the gearbox is as good as that, I mean, it is a beautiful, it reminds me very much of my S2000. That had probably the best gear change I've ever had. Um, if you've got that in a car, why wouldn't you engineer the brake pedal and the accelerator so that, so that the more advanced driver can heel toe? Because that way you get the very maximum out of the car. And, and that's, that's annoying. So I've been driving this car for about an hour now and it is massively impressive and I'm starting to realise why this thing holds the front wheel drive production car record around the North Shire. I think it's 7 minutes 50. It's just ballistically quick. I just, I just have no idea how you get that much horsepower through the front wheels of a, of a hatchback. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. I thought it would feel a lot less um, sporty and engaging than the four-wheel drive cars I've done so far in the Hot Hatch series, and it's anything but. It, it really grabs hold of you, and you, you really do. You, you get the feeling you want to sort of rag this car and really grab it by the scruff of the neck. And I really like that because it's just full of character. Um, and and it, it is a massively quick car, so yeah. <laughs> It's kind of surprised me. I, I thought it would just be a, a horrible mess of understeer and, and torque steer. And, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's, not a, it's not a refined car when you drive it quick, but it is mega fun, mega fun, and mega fast. such an engaging drive. So let's talk specifications then, because I went on the configurator this morning to have a quick look, because these car, this car's relatively good value compared certainly with the AMG A45. So I spec one up, um, and now the really cool thing is, a lot of this stuff comes as standard. These cool seats standard, wheels standard, you can't choose to change them. Um, and I spec'd up a blue, and now they do a Type R and then a Type R GT, so a blue Type R, um, and there are two really expensive options that you would probably want. So for about 1500 quid, you can have that rear wing in carbon fiber, which you probably have to do. And then they do a 2000 pound carbon exterior pack, um, which puts carbon all over diffusers and stuff. Uh, so I'll put both of those things on. Uh, and it came to about 36,000 quid. I then spec'd up a GT, which to start with is, is an extra couple of thousand pounds. But here's the thing, if you were to buy, I think probably a white one or a black one, they do a whole bunch of optional extras, and this interior's got some actually, that have taints of red in them. So you'd probably want that, and I managed to get the GT up to about 40,000 pounds. So, you know, that kind of range, I think, 35 to 40,000 uh, pounds, and you'll get one of these really nicely specced up. And if you compare that, that's, I guess, um, Focus RS money, it's not really, um, you know, it, it's an awful lot cheaper than an AMG A45. So quite interesting, uh, good value. And what I like is, is a lot of it comes as standard, so you don't have to spend lots of money on things that you should be grudge paying for. Okay, lovely dry road, naught to 60 test, let's go. Dug in a bit there, come on. 60. I think I can do better than that. I dug in just a little bit, but yeah, we'll see what time that is. It, it's again the art of getting the car off the line, doing it yourself. So it's not like that AMG last week with a fantastic launch control system where, to be honest, my mum could have done that 0 to 60 time. This one, you've got to get the bike point right, you've got to manage the wheel spin. So it's quite a tricky car to get off the line and do a really good 0 to 60 time. But it is impressive how it, how it gets all of that power onto the tarmac. What 
are my final impressions of this car and how does it compare so far in the hot hatch series well um looks wise i just think it kills everybody else in looks it's just so aggressive that rear end is fantastic and i know lots of people won't like it because it's too garish but i've always been a bit like that i'm the kind of guy that fitted extra spotlights on his mark one fiesta and thought it looked cool so maybe don't take tight styling tips from me but i do like the the exterior styling of all of them even the amg a45 when it's got the wing and the aero pack i don't think looks as aggressive or as cool as one of these things um, the performance I mean, there's no doubt on a, especially if the road conditions were damp, A to B, you're probably gonna get there a little bit quicker in a, a Focus RS or an AMG A45. You've got more power, you've got four wheel drive, and, and you know, it, it's bound to kind of win. Obviously, if you kind of assume equal driving, driving capabilities of the driver. However, from a immersive driving experience, this car is brilliant. The gearbox is great. It's a really nice kind of notchy change. Um, it's 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 kind of yeah, I guess because it bumps around and you kind of skits around. It kind of gets you there, and you really do have to grab the car. And, and I like that. So you know, it's certainly not a, a particularly relaxing car to drive. If you're wanting a car that you were going to do lots of miles in and have as a daily, this might wind you up after a while. I would have think, with, you know, especially with a harsher ride. But if you want a car to get in on a Saturday or a car to go to a track day and have a right good laugh and blitz lots and lots of other cars, then buy one of these because it's it's excellent. Uh, and for the money, I think it's good too. Um, things I'd change, I'd like a slightly more, more kind of uh, loud kind of exhaust experience. Um, but I do love the whooshes from the wastegate and the turbo. They're very cool. Anyway, um, I will again summarize this when I finished all my hot hat series. I have a huge thank you uh, again to the Hendy Group. Uh, Hendy Ford put me on to Hendy Honda and Chris uh, uh, Hendy Honda got in touch and said, look, we got a Type R demonstrator. It has to be in your hot hatch series. So massive thank you to them for letting me have access to the car. Uh, I had a really great time today and the weather's been beautiful as well. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, Please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. Um, I have, uh, in terms of hot hatch series, I think the next one may well be the Megane Cup S, the 275 Cup S, if I can sort that one out. Um, I'm really struggling to get an Audi RS3, so if anybody knows somebody with an Audi RS3 and they don't mind me driving it, let them get in touch, that would be good. Even Audi don't have one. Um, so um, I will see you on the next video, guys. You take care, drive safe. <laughs>